Hello and welcome. Uh, thanks very much for tuning in. This is the first in our series of Asia updates, where in about seven, eight minutes, we will be discussing the latest news from China, Japan, and Korea. We'll be very much focusing on COVID-19 and what it means for business in Asia. So a lot of people uh, have been asking us for updates from the region. So we thought we would share our regular calls with you and show you what it's really like out there. So I have on the line with me the managing directors of Intralink's Asia offices, Jonathan Cleave, who runs our operations in Korea, Will Just Frizzer, uh, who is in charge of Intralink's Japan office, and Alex Barton, who leads our China unit. Guys, thanks as always. Thanks very much for taking this call. Um, today is just for you guys to give us a little bit of a rundown of the general situation in each territory. So let's let's get right to it. Let's start with um, Will Jasprisa in Japan. Will's been um, living in, in Japan for, I think, well over 20 years and has been with Intralink for, I don't even know how long, Will, I think, well over a decade. years in Japan and 12 years at Intralink. Right, brilliant. So, Will, what's, what's the situation uh, in Japan? Okay, so let's start with the, the COVID-19 situation. 11,000 cases at the moment, um, 260 deaths. Um, and consider that Japan's had cases since January, so those numbers are um, fairly respectable. Um, recently, the cases have risen, the, the cases per day. There was a uh, spike in April 11 of 700 cases in a day. But since then, it's settled down at about 400. Um, and the government's main struggle is to make sure that there aren't so many cases that hospitals are overwhelmed. So they've taken to increasing the number of beds. I think there are about 12,000 uh, beds for COVID patients now, um, when they're only half that number a month ago, and the beds are about 70% capacity, and they're increasing those numbers all the time. Um, so that's the, the general situation. When you think about it, it's still 0.2 deaths per uh, 100,000 people. So when you think of how many people are here, 126 million, um, pretty good numbers. Um, how is life? Well, everyone's at home. So there's a state of emergency, but Japan, the Japanese government doesn't actually have the power to force people to stay at home. So there are no policemen telling people to go inside and, and uh, shuttering businesses. The um, prime minister and the governor of Tokyo have, have strongly urged people to stay at home, have urged businesses to let people work from home, and we have complied because you know, we're used to disasters, typhoons, earthquakes. We know that you need to, to get together and, uh, and cooperate so that we get through this. So most of the, com well, most of the country is working from home. Um, a lot of schools are closed. Um, we do most of our meetings now over, over Zoom. So uh, in that sense, business is per usual, but we're not going into the office. Um, and depending on which, which industry it is, some, some of our guys are extremely busy. So ad tech is used to doing Zoom conference calls. They're doing as many meetings now as, as ever. Um, R&D departments kind of want to do a face-to-face, -face, so they're either doing a Zoom call or they're asking for us to push this maybe into, into May. Um, so there's a very broad brush approach to, uh, to where we, we are at the moment in Japan. Fantastic. Thanks very much, Will. So you mentioned, you know, you mentioned ad tech uh, and a couple of others. What does this mean kind of in a broader picture for companies looking to do business in Japan in this climate? So for me, it's actually quite nostalgic because it's like being in the company 10 years ago when people just didn't visit Japan. We worked for a client and we saw them maybe once or twice a year, um, but we just got on with the work, going out and dealing with Japanese companies and reporting the results to the clients. It's gone back to those days. These days, Japan's very popular and clients like to visit um, and it's good to have that interaction with clients, but they can't. So we just get on with the business. Um, it means that we've had things like virtual visits where we've set up meetings. We've done some face-to-face -face and some over Zoom. And uh, the clients are then um, joined by Zoom, by video conference. Uh, and that's worked very well because we've identified the right people. Um, the only thing missing was they weren't in the literal same room together, but they've found the right contacts. Um, they're finding the right business opportunities and they're happy. Right. Okay, that's that's great, Will. Thanks, thanks. That's really interesting stuff. Thanks very much for um, for that. Let's go straight to China to Alex Barton. 
Alex is in charge of the China office and has been for a while now. And you've been with Interlink for maybe 10 years now, Alex? Exactly, 10 years this year. Fantastic. And obviously in, in China, uh, much, much longer. Do tell us, you know, what the situation is in, you know, broadly in China, but in Shanghai as well. Sure. Um, so in China to date, we've had 84,000 cases. Um, at the moment, we're having roughly 10 to 20 new cases per day. Uh, obviously, China being the start of uh, the outbreak, we are also furthest along on the route to recovery, which is great. And two major updates this week. First major update is that uh, the government, for the first time in 30 years, uh, announced that there was a contraction in GDP, uh, down by 6.8% this quarter. Uh, this is obviously very big news. The bright side of this, though, is it's less severe than expected, um, if we were to go by the official numbers, uh, which is very good, of course. Um, in terms of what that means for us, uh, we are main, widely business as usual. Um, I'd give it 85% as what it was before the outbreak. Um, everyone's working from the office. We've been working from the office for the past month. Uh, most people are willing to meet, uh, especially in Shanghai. In cases where they're not, uh, we're doing virtual calls or like in Japan, virtual visits. Um, if you look at the metros, they're pretty packed again, um, probably around 80% of capacity or 80% back to normal. Uh, restaurants are full, uh, bars are full, you can go out and have a beer, um, but people are still being very disciplined. You're, everyone's walking around in a mask, which is not unusual in China, of course. Um, people, to a certain extent, are still um, doing social distancing, although in a city like Shanghai, that's quite challenging. Um, what it means for us then here, um, on a day-to-day, -day, things are pretty much um, back, to, back to normal. Uh, we're doing as much as we can um, here in the office, and um, we're generally going out and um, doing more or less exactly what we're doing before. That's great. Thanks very much. And very briefly, Alex, what, what do you think does this mean kind of in a more broader perspective and perhaps for the future um, in terms of, you know, companies wanting to look to do business in, in China? Sure. Um, so for us, there's, two, there's still two factors that are holding us back, I think, um, from, from doing business as usual in China. First thing is that foreigners uh, still can't travel to China. Um, there's currently a ban on foreign, foreigners entering China. Um, so similar to Japan, we're seeing a lot less client visits. Uh, the second one is that whilst we are traveling domestically, so we're going to do customer visits, we're going to do supplier visits. Um, this is a little bit more difficult than it was before, just because there's uh, an increased number of safety measures that are taking place. So whilst we are traveling, uh, we are trying to limit that a little bit more. Um, however, it has brought, a, brought around quite a few opportunities as well. Um, so, for instance, we've, we've had a client um, who was talking to a big Chinese tech company a couple of months ago to help them with some engineering work. Um, eventually, that opportunity went away uh, because the customer decided to do the work in-house. However, with the COVID situation, they've now um, come to the conclusion that they haven't got the resource to do it internally. So that opportunity is now back on the table. Um, so these kinds of opportunities are coming about, um, especially when it comes to um, high-tech uh, industries. The BATs of the world um, are, have been struggling a little bit um, to meet their deadlines. Um, so that's definitely a, an area of opportunity for foreign tech companies. Fantastic. Thanks, Thanks very much uh, indeed, um, Alex. Um, and last, but uh, certainly not least, um, we've got Jonathan Cleave in Korea. John, whom I've known for many years, and we actually worked together uh, for a bunch of years in, in the Korea office. Um, John, how's, how's Seoul? Uh, Seoul is well. Seoul is uh, doing very well at the moment, benefiting from the fact that China um, has not been producing quite as much as uh, it usually does, so the, the, the air is cleaner than it generally is. Um, situation in Korea, uh, listen, Korea was, you know, second worst hit after, after China, and about six weeks ago went through a really bad time. Um, the country has won a lot of praise uh, for how it is traced, tracked, uh, and isolated uh, its cases. Uh, it has now in total about 10,000 cases, uh, about 200, I think 237 deaths at last count. Um, 
but now is very much under control. Uh, and over the last three days, uh, the new cases haven't uh, risen above 15 per day. Um, and people feel, uh, I think, uh, actually, the government's a little concerned about exactly how complacent people feel uh, about how well the country has managed it. So um, the government is still advising caution, uh, but they have uh, reduced the severity of their, um, their kind of uh, advice to make sure that people are socially distancing uh, and cram schools and churches and um, various uh, institutions that require a certain amount of social gathering are now reopening. Uh, and, and maybe just one last thing we had just to show how normal things are now in Korea. We had an election here uh, last week with 68% uh, turnout. Um, and I think uh, assuming there's not going to be a spike in 10 days, then we'll see that uh, really Korea is over this, uh, this first wave. Yeah, thanks for that. I was actually following the, the elections quite, um, you know, with, 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 with a lot of interest. That's, that's really cool stuff. Um, and in terms of companies, you know, moving in or doing business in Korea, um, what, what new trends uh, are you seeing? So I think well, one of the things that's going to come out of this um, uh, coronavirus situation in Korea is data technologies. Now, Korea has always been very, very strong in hardware. Uh, I think what we're seeing is um, whether it's, you know, government uh, produced apps to tell you where to uh, be able to procure masks or whether it's apps to show you exactly, uh, you know, where somebody that's caught coronavirus has been moving around the city. Uh, I think there's a, a recognition in Korea that data has really helped them to deal with this crisis. Uh, and I think what has traditionally been quite a, um, a you know, a privacy uh, preferring country uh, and a country that's been a bit wary about third party use of mm -hmm. data, I think we're gonna start seeing over the next year or two, uh, a real relaxing of the regulations and therefore a huge uh, amount of opportunity for foreign firms uh, with data solutions. It's really interesting. Thanks. Thanks very much for that, uh, John. Okay, so there you, there you have it. It seems, you know, China and, and Korea seem to be pretty much getting back to business, maybe a little bit in a different form and certainly um, with a certain amount of social distancing, but certainly business and people, people seem to be going back to the offices as well. Japan um, seems to be in a little bit of a wait and see pattern, but as you can, as, as Will kind of pointed out, you know, remote work is very much underway and, and, and hopefully the country will be, will be out of this very soon as well. Um, okay, guys, uh, as always, a uh, pleasure to speak and thanks very much for, for your time today. Um, let's do this again next time, same time, same place uh, next week. Thanks, Thanks very much. Stay safe. Cheers. Bye -bye. Cheers. Let us know if there's topics you would like us to cover around business in Asia or if you have any direct questions to any of us.